And now, from Ursa Specificus, the most misunderstood name in baseless conjecture, this is News Undies, all the news that shouldn't be news, with Paul Torville. Featuring opposing viewpoints with pig and sheep. And now, the longest haired news anchor we know, Paul Torville. For June 12, 2009, this is News Undies, all the news that shouldn't be news. Sheep is dealing with a family emergency and is off this week. Sitting in for sheep will be fish. I'm Paul Torville with these headlines. Construction is expected to be completed by December 25th this year on a military dining facility at a U.S. base in Iraq. This dining facility is a $30 million mistake that's too far along to be abandoned. This is just one example of the misspending of tens of billions of dollars in Iraq and Afghanistan since 2001 outlined in a 111-page report to Congress from the Wartime Contracting Commission. There's no mention in the report of the fact that the wars themselves arose from the same poor management, weak oversight, and failure to learn from mistakes that the poor spending choices themselves are attributed to. The Pirate Party of Sweden actually won one of the country's seats in the European Parliament in a recent election. The Pirate Party, an unaffiliated consequence of government harassment of the controversial internet file sharing site The Pirate Bay, won 7.9% of the vote securing one seat and possibly a second if the Lisbon Treaty goes into effect. The Pirate Party is an issue-focused party focusing on freedom of information and individual privacy rights, Copyright and patent reform are pet issues of the Pirate Party. Of course, while the notion that people feel the need to form new political parties in order to address their concerns is troubling, the fact that they can is reassuring. Here's hoping someone in the U.S. has that same kind of chutzpah. Denise Richards. Some political watchers are noting that President Obama is much more free with his mentioning of Jesus Christ than President Bush was, even though President Bush was such an outspoken evangelical Christian. The apparent difference is that while Bush was seemingly content to listen to voices in his head, which he believed were uttered by a god, Obama seems to be taking the written utterances of one or more characters, who may be historical or not, to reinforce his point among people who are prone to revere such utterances and or characters. This is substantially less worrying to people who base their decisions on rational thought, rather than the hallucinated exhortations of an imaginary sky daddy. More news after this. Hey gang, it's time for Celebrity Birthdays again. I got my cake hat on, let's rock! Saturday the 6th, Nathan Hale, dead. Robert Falcon Scott, dead. Scott of the Antarctic, huh? Come on. Dave Scott, Apollo-era astronaut. He's not dead yet. Sunday the 7th, we got Dean Martin, dead. Tom Jones, Jenny Jones, Liam Neeson, and Prince, the little guy with the hair. Monday the 8th, Francis Crick, dead. DNA guy, kind of important. Leroy Neiman and Boz Skaggs. Lido. Whoa, 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 whoa. Tuesday the 9th, Les Paul, guitar guy, yeah, the guitar named after him, oh, you can go and have a bite, oh, you'll still be hearing that one, Jackie Mason and John Lord, hush, Wednesday the 10th, Judy Garland, dead, F. Lee Bailey, and Mickey Jones, Thursday the 11th, Sir Jackie Stewart, race car driver, right, no, no, that guy, yeah, he's still kicking, apparently, Adrian Barbeau, and Donnie Van Zant. And for Friday, the 12th of June, that's today, kids. Jim Neighbors, Dead Chick Korea Bun E. Carlos, drummer from Cheap Trick, gotta know that. And Brad Delp, singer from Boston, dead. That's it for Celebrity Birthdays. I'm Paul Torville, and I'm done! Air France, Flight 477. Employers seem to be happily taking advantage of the fear their employees have of being laid off. Now, in some circles, taking advantage of someone else's misfortune is called opportunism. Not here. It's just business. In other circles, if you foster and benefit from the fear of others, that makes you a terrorist. Not here, though. It's just business. For those in fear of losing their jobs, pro-business think tank dweebs suggest groveling, finding extra time to work, never calling in sick, Never taking vacation. 
Ignoring friends and family. Calling your boss master. Asking for a 50% pay cut. Asking to work for free. Only eating, drinking, smoking, and using the restroom on your own time. Providing your own office supplies and equipment. A story from last week's show had to be cut due to time. It involved the Grand View Topless Coffee Shop in Vassalboro, Maine. It started out as a simple Whiskey Tango Foxtrot story, but then the place caught fire. The owner had no insurance. Now it turns out that fire investigators have ruled the fire an arson. So Donald Crabtree, the owner of Grand View, is seeking donations to help rebuild because of the permitting red tape he'd have to go through in order to sell donuts again. Just to kick Vassalboro while it's down, 51-year-old Danforth Ross was arrested and charged with operating under the influence. He and a friend had driven his riding lawnmower to a local store to get more beer. Ross's driver license had been revoked, so the mower must have seemed to him a logical choice. Right. One quote from one speech may have the power to sink appellate judge Sonia Sotomayor's hopes of being appointed to the U.S. Supreme Court. Here are Pig and Fish to sort it out. I haven't spoken to Ms. Sotomayor, but the quote in question seems to say that Ivy League white males have been the de facto ruling class of this country since its founding, and the perspective of this ruling class could use a little, uh, broadening. I don't find that racist. I wouldn't even call it reverse racism. I'd call it racelessness. Glub, glub, glub. That's what pig and fish think. What are your thoughts? Email them to ovcomments at newsundies.com. Something happened, and now the Mars Climate Orbiter has rebooted and is in safe mode. Crews are working on the problem and could have it repaired by next week. Hope that helps. P.S. Thanks for all the detail, NASA. The short version of this story is this. David Carradine, a celebrity, died of celebrity causes. You want the detailed version? Okay, here goes. First, a little background on Carradine himself. He was married five times, and he had a three-year domestic partnership with Barbara Hershey. He fathered seven children by two of his wives and with Barbara Hershey. At least two of his ex-wives reported that he had unusual, potentially dangerous sexual appetites. His most notable acting roles were Kwai Chang Kane and Descendants from the Kung Fu franchise, and Bill from the Quentin Tarantino Kill Bill films. So the bottom line is that he was found bound at the wrists, neck, and genitals and hanging in the closet of his Bangkok hotel room. With all the investigative power brought to bear on Carradine's death, it's been ruled an accidental suicide murder by autoerotic asphyxiation. For the lay viewer, he pulled a Hutchins. Sonia Sotomayor. And finally, and I do mean finally, we all saw this coming, didn't we? John Gosselin of the over-publicized John and Kate Plus Eight reality show family apparently can't satisfy his need for socialization with his own wife and eight children. The Uber breeder has allegedly been seen partying late one night with various women and then leaving with one of them. Rumors are circulating that John and Kate might be headed for divorce. If that happens, John will likely get his own reality show entitled John Minus Eight Times Child Support Equals Living in a Box. Well, that's all for this edition of News Undies. Remember, if you see news that shouldn't be news, you can email your story tips to undies at newsundies.com. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm Paul Torville. After that, I might be Scott Martin.